Coming up on Mountain News this morning, a gas leak in one southern state sends dozens of people to the hospital. And a pair of accidents involving parade floats turns deadly in New Orleans during their annual Mardi Gras celebration. And a local fire department hosts a concert to raise money for much needed gear. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning. The time is 531 on February 24th. I'm Madison Pergram. And I'm Will Puckett. Thank you for tuning in to Mountain News This Morning on this Monday. On this Monday, we had a great weather weekend. Unfortunately, there is some bad news for the people that like the sun and a little yeah, bit touchable. Yeah, it's all falling down this Monday. <laughs> Let's go to Brandon Robinson. Brandon, back to the rain story. Boys, I love how you all just set me up like it was so beautiful. It was wonderful. Let's go over to Brandon and give you the bad news this morning. Sorry. <laughs> it's all right. I, I love y'all anyway, but you're right. It is a little bit on the soggy side this morning. So just be aware of that and be careful this morning and slow it down. Live pinpoint Doppler radar. We are scanning some heavier bands of rain, but we also take a little closer look at the higher elevations. Maybe a touch of a snow trying to mix in there, especially above 2,500 feet. Again, Black Mountain, maybe over toward... Um, Pound Mountain there in southwest Virginia, but again, not a whole lot of action. The heavier bands of rain now down toward parts of uh, Pulaski County and coming back into Laurel County there. London, you're getting ready to get soaked here in a little bit. Maybe down toward North Corbin there as well. Temperatures. 39 in Somerset and Hazard, 38 in Ashland, rather, 36 in Harlan. Everybody else in the 40s right now. 12-hour planner for today, 49, about the best we'll get, and those rain chances will be around off and on throughout the day. I'll have the extended forecast in just a little bit. Will? Brian, we just got to bully you back sometimes, man. Just to rib you a little bit. Thank you. Well, dozens of people were hospitalized after a major gas leak in Mississippi Sunday. A pipeline leak in Yazoo County forced more than 300 people from their homes. The mayor of one nearby community says it was a scary situation, but is glad the situation was not any worse than it was. People started noticing a funny smell. They blamed it on the paper mill that comes in, but it didn't quite smell right and several stepped outside to see what is it and they started noticing they were getting very short of breath. The gas line immediately began to shut off as a built-in mechanism to prevent it from being spread further. Officials say the wet weather may be to blame for the line break. 48 people were taken to nearby hospitals. We do not know their condition. Well, tragedy strikes New Orleans twice in the Mardi Gras season's festivities, leaving two people dead. On Saturday night, a 58-year-old man was fatally struck by a tandem float, which has at least two floats connected by a hitch and pulled by a tractor. Authorities say a tandem float also fatally struck a woman at a parade Wednesday. Officials have banned tandem floats for the rest of the 2020 Mardi Gras season. We have to do our due diligence in making sure that this is a safe carnival uh, for everyone. And in doing so, I think we have to do a, a, our job in evaluating the safety measures that could be put into place moving forward. Despite the deaths, we are told Mardi Gras' biggest celebrations will go on as scheduled Tuesday. New Orleans EMS tweeted Sunday night that two people were transported to a trauma center after falling from their floats. Both were reported to be in stable condition. And three people are dead and 18 are injured after a weekend bus crash in California. Officials with the North San Diego County Fire Department say the bus was traveling on the interstate when it rolled over Saturday morning. Rescuers found it on its roof with several people trapped inside. Area hospitals are offering medical care to the injured and investigators are trying to piece together what happened. And new this morning, one person is shot and six others are injured after a gun went off at a flea market in Houston. Police say it is unclear if the person with the weapon meant to fire it. They say he told them he had been drinking and had the gun in his pocket. Witnesses say it was in his hand. The shot went through a man's leg and ricocheted, hitting the others. The flea market was holding a dance during the incident. Well, back here at home, officials with the Clay County Sheriff's Office say a woman was arrested after trying to fight with law enforcement this weekend. Police say 33-year-old Priscilla Lovins was found causing a disturbance inside a nearby business. The Clay County Sheriff says Lovins tried to run away and then fought officers as she was being arrested. After she was placed in the back of the patrol car, we are told Lovins also tried to kick out the windows. She was taken to the Clay County Detention Center. Officials with the Laurel County Sheriff's Office say a man was arrested Saturday night after attempting to strangle a woman. Deputies say when they arrived to the scene, they could hear a woman making choking noises from inside a home. 
When deputies went inside, they told 32-year-old Daniel Hornsby of London to stop choking the woman, but he didn't. They jumped into action, taking Hornsby into custody. He is being held in the Laurel County Correctional Center. And a Floyd County man is behind bars this morning following a weekend police chase. Martin City Police Chief Kenny Stidham says he tried to pull over a pickup truck on Saturday afternoon, but the car did not stop. Officials say 37-year-old John Tackett of Harold was driving the truck. The chase went on for several miles until Tackett crashed into two patrol cars in the printer community. Tackett faces several charges. And one person is dead in southwest Virginia following a crash late last week. It happened Friday afternoon in Wise County. Virginia State Police say 80-year-old Hazel Mullins of Coburn flipped her car over a guardrail on Route 58A. Officials say her car ran off the left side of the road, and when she overcorrected, her car crossed the center line, going over a guardrail and hitting a tree. The crash is still under investigation. Well, a portion of a Perry County Road is now back open after it was closed for more than a week. Part of Left Fork of Mesa's Creek Road originally closed because of a break in the pavement. The road closing caused Viper Elementary to close at one point. Repairs were supposed to be done by Friday evening, but were delayed. Officials warned to still use caution when driving over the roadway, as some parts of the road are still rough. Well, Bernie Sanders is surging after his commanding victory in Nevada. A new CBS poll shows Sanders gaining on Joe Biden in South Carolina. The former vice president holds the top spot with 28 percent, but Sanders is not far behind. CBS's Nicole Killian reports from Las Vegas. Senator Bernie Sanders continued his victory lap after winning the jackpot in Nevada. We won the Nevada caucus. And don't tell anybody, because these folks get very, very agitated and nervous. We're going to win here in Texas. As the surging frontrunner looked towards Super Tuesday, former Vice President Joe Biden focused on the more immediate task at hand. The African-American community in South Carolina can make a judgment about who the next president of the United States is going to be. Shoring up African-American support in South Carolina, where Sanders appears to be gaining. Bernie Sanders, can you stop him? I told you I'm not going to play this game with you. I don't know. It's not about who I stop. It's why I'm running. Veteran Congressman Jim Clyburn hasn't endorsed a candidate yet, but cautioned a potential Sanders nomination may not play well down ballot in his home state. South Carolinians are pretty leery about that title uh, socialist. You know, Former is, uh, South Bend Mayor Pete Buttigieg, Buttigieg kept up his swipes on Sanders. I believe the ideals he talks about are ideals we all share. But I also believe that the way we will build the movement to defeat Donald Trump is to call people into our tent, not to call them names online. Nicole Killian, CBS News, Las Vegas. Now, Buttigieg is challenging Saturday's caucus results. His campaign sent a letter to the state party claiming irregularities and asking it to release more data. A Democratic spokesperson tells CBS News says there are no plans to change the party's reporting process. And Tennessee is officially the volunteer state. Governor Bill Lee signed a bill Friday afternoon to make the volunteer state Tennessee's official nickname. The resolution was approved by state lawmakers on February 10th after it received unanimous approval from the House and the Senate the week before. According to the Secretary of State, Tennessee first became known as the Volunteer State during the War of 1812 after sending 1,500 volunteer soldiers. Governor Lee took to Twitter to make the official announcement. Blows my mind that that wasn't already official. Anyway, firefighters' gear is expensive. Many volunteer fire departments in our area face the same funding shortage problem. As WYMT's Marianne Fletcher reports, the Wheelwright Fire Department in Floyd County held a concert last night to help with expenses. Running a volunteer fire department is not cheap. It costs about $2,500 for a set of turnout gear, about $6,500 for um, SCBAs. The government requires departments to purchase these items. So we always try to come up with new ways to have the community participate in different activities. And unfortunately, the standing on the roadside things kind of kind of fall into the past. Tiffany Riviera and Sam Little know they need to be creative. I mean, there's some serious talent in this area, so we decided to tap into that. and and use that as a resource. 
hosting a concert at the Will Wright Gym with local talent Nathan Hall and Sweet Run. Bringing a concert of a lot of different musical artists uh, that are actually local to the area is really a, an amazing way that we can actually raise funds for the fire department. Riviera says the department serves the community in more ways than one. And having fundraisers like this is just one little way to keep it always going. <laughs> Playing tunes and raising funds in Floyd County. Marianne Fletcher, WYMT Mountain News. For 100 years, the Wheelwright Fire Department has served the surrounding community. Members say they want to thank everyone for coming out last night. A memorial service for NBA great Kobe Bryant is scheduled for later this morning. The celebration of life is set for 10 o'clock local time in L.A. It will be at the Staples Center, where Bryant played with the Lakers for more than 20 years. It's also for his daughter, Gianna. She and seven others died in a helicopter crash with Kobe Bryant last month. The service is taking place on February 24th, and that date is significant. Two was Gianna's jersey number, and 24 was one of her father's. NBA TV will live stream the service. And still to come on Mountain News this morning, how much you, would you be willing to pay for some Oreos? The answer for one person might surprise you. The weather is not going to be the nicest to start the last full week of February. I'll walk you through all the twists and turns in about three minutes.